Hey everybody, this is David at Barnyard Bees. Uh, today is the video that we're going to discuss hive preparations for winter time and the things that are important and the things that you need to do and make sure that you get done before you close the hive up and let it go through winter. So uh, right here is the, I always show this feeder because I like people to see from week to week how the bees are using it and how they're some days that they're not. Uh, we had our first frost about two days ago. So that may have hurt the golden rod a little bit. It, I mean, it was kind of spaced out here and there. So there's still, there's still golden rod coming in. The bees are very active, but they're also starting to take the pollen a little bit heavier too. So I always wanted to show that to begin with. Then there's several things on my list here that I want to talk to everybody about. Leaves are starting to fall in. Leaves are starting to come down a little bit here and there. Uh, one thing is make sure by now that you've, you've started treating for mites. And if you haven't, please uh, get in there, do something to treat your, your bees. Uh, we recommend the oxalic acid. We use the... The Pro Vape 110 is our favorite tool because we run a lot of hives, so that, that is absolutely required that we have to have something like that. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the, the top right hand corner on uh, how we treat it for mites. So if you want to go up and watch that video after you watch this one, then I'll put it up there in the corner. And uh, on the far left corner will be our subscribe button. Don't forget to subscribe at the end of the video and, and like and please share these videos please share this one this is a very important video and i'm going to try to share quite a bit today of uh, uh how we prep our bees and the things that we do to get them through the winter now having talked about the mites uh you know make sure you treat and next thing is hive beetles uh now the hive beetles, once you get a good freeze, they're going to start slowing down because then they're not going to reproduce quite as good because they're dropping off in the ground and hopefully the ground will freeze and it's going to stop that cycle. But you're still going to have some hive beetles in your hive that's going to leach off of your bees through the winter time. So try to get you in one of these uh, beetle barns. These things work excellent. If you have a, a few remainder left in your hive go ahead and get rid of them you know bait this thing up uh, with some some good bait that'll that'll kill them and close it up slide it in the back of your hive in the corner the the hive beetles like to, they, they they run into the corner the, the bees will run them into the corner so that'll corral them and, and these things have an opening on e on each side uh, we sell these at barnyardbees.com. Uh, I promise you, once you use these things, you'll you'll wish you'd always had them. And uh, so, so that's covering the the hive beetles and the mites. And uh, the next thing we want to talk about is is ventilation. Uh, ventilating your hives through the winter, people try to seal these things up, and they'll put tar paper on them and they'll close them up tight. Well. That might be fine to a degree in extreme cold climates. I understand that. But still, you, you still have to have uh, the entrance open somewhat, and there has to be an exit somewhere in the top of the hive, just like a chimney effect. Those bees, in the wintertime, they're going to generate heat. If, for example, if you went out in the wintertime, and if it was 10 degrees and you popped the top of the hive, which you wouldn't do, and you put your hand on, on there, you would think there was a fire inside that hive. It would, they generate 90 uh, some degree temperatures in that cluster, as they cluster. So they build up a lot of heat. Well, when you got internal heat and external cold, you know what you get. You get condensation. So condensation will rise off of those bees and go to the roof of the hive. And, uh, and if there's no screen to exit that moisture it will condensate on the top 
that condensation will then drip down on top of the bees and then it'll chill them and then it'll kill them. So they get killed from the from the bees not getting ventilated. So that's what that's that's why I like so much is with the hive top feeders because they're very ventilated hives. Uh, these here we make these ourselves and that's what we use for for a uh, rapid feeder it goes on top. So in these here you can see this is the feeder part right here there's the bees right here's the feeder part we have a we have a vent hole here one in the back two on the inside one here where the, here's the there's without the feeder so we've got a vent hole here with hardware cloth there's the hole for the feeder there's the other vent hole now what will happen these bees, if you can see, if I can get it in the sun here, where you can see where these bees has propolized some of that shut. Okay, these bees know better than we do. If they have too much ventilation, they will close up some of the opening. So when you see that, don't go scraping it off. Those bees know because there may be other cracks and crevices in the hive that you're not aware of. Perhaps up under the, the feeder itself, uh, a crack that they didn't propolize maybe on, on in the in the box itself in the bottom you never know so so those bees feel the ventilation they they know they they know the amount of draft and they will adjust accordingly they will adjust the the vents with with propolis in order to close them up to where the point where they want them so don't scrape it off if they close it up 100 percent leave it alone because apparently there's enough in there that they don't need it. So another thing with the ventilation that will help you out, make sure you keep this hive tilted. What I usually do, you go tilt it towards the front, towards the entrance. Usually what I do is, is go level with at least an inch on the back. And what that does, if any water blows in, it'll roll back out. And also, say if you do accumulate any moisture on the top of the feeder, it will also roll forward and down and help as well. So that's two things that that will do. Don't worry, it's better to go too much than not enough. So if you go level and two inches in the back, it's better than level. I usually go an inch, you could go an inch and a half, um, would be fine and so that about covers the ventilation I'm looking over here on my cheat notes so I don't forget anything because I know I'll, for, I'll forget so so that's going over the the hive the entrance reducers what we do here we use these throughout the the summer Th this is not one that's made correctly here this is a this is one that we had sealed off, and then when we did the split, we brought it over and opened it up. Let me show you one that we did that's correct, correctly made. Okay, here's one that's made correctly. Uh, we do these here at Barnyard Bees. Uh, these have multiple doors on them, and, and it's very, it comes in so handy in the summertime. Uh, you can, they always have 100% ventilation all the time. Uh, regardless of how many is open or how many close. If you get a robin situation, we always keep this little bitty door right here on the right or on the left, it doesn't matter. And uh, what we'll do, if we get a robin situation or things just get the hives weak, say if the hive is even weak, we'll, we'll leave all but just this one open. We'll leave this open and close everything else. So, uh, but getting to the entrance reducer. Now, what we do, and I won't demonstrate, I'll just explain and it's, it's easy to understand. You, you'll take your entrance reducer. You don't have to take this off. Leave it on there because you can use it again next year. All you got to do, now you'll have to take your frames out. That's the only disadvantage. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could do it this way too. You could actually roll this up and slide your reducer in and then slide your screen back down. What we usually do on our last inspection of the year we just take our reducer, slide it in from the inside, slide it out, 
and of course open one of the doors where the where the entrance is reduced small the smallest part of the reducer that we'll use and you want you want to reduce your entrance on a nuke uh, no more than an inch I recommend about an inch on a nuke uh, it's it's not going to crowd them too much as far as need more space because they're going to start throttling down the population is going to fall anyway so that inch and then you still got your screen and then come next year pull that wood back out when it gets warm enough and then there you got your full ventilation again so so that will help you reduce the amount of air going in the bottom now usually starting about frost time usually about frost time after your first frost start feeding your your bees two to one sugar water if you start a little bit before that's fine but i would recommend two to one and what we do here in north georgia now th this is different from from climate to climate from uh, zone to zone we're zone seven so we're in north the northern part of, of georgia what we do i got a set ways of doing things every year first for us we start uh, two to one sugar water and then we'll feed two to one sugar wa water till december 1st december 1st we we uh make sure all the all the sugar water is gone and then we we do one last feeding and what we do then it's a dry sugar feed and i'm going to demonstrate and show you how we do that now there's there's two ways of doing it if you have if you have one of these feeders like this the rapid feeders that we sell at barnyard bees and we, we we literally folks have sold thousands of these this year without exaggerating these things people have bought these up and, and we sell out as about as quick as we get them in these things are a hit they're uh, really really good because they're so versatile and it feeds from the center of the hive and uh, they, they soak that sugar water down I mean fast but what you can do in the winter time what you do this cup here remember there was the on the bottom on the bottom it's got like a you can see where it sticks down just a little bit and that fits in here keeps it, it won't move around so what we do in the winter time we pull this off this cup and usually i'll just set it to the side like this where you don't lose it and then you'll take your dry sugar and you, you'll just pour your your dry sugar and what we do depending on the amount of bees in there if you have a lot of bees you know and you can always come back and check this that's what makes this so nice here is that is so easy to come back and check two months from now january february whatever before you start feeding and see if you run out now what you do from here is you put a lid on it okay my lid blew away i had to go find it so what you want to do now these lids this is the lid that comes with the feeder these simply just go right over top just like that now you can use this year round if you want to but we feed so many it's such a pain to pull that off every time usually what we'll do we'll take this and put it inside our storage building till come fall and then we use it now you know like okay you got your dry sugar in there what will happen now this the condensation will also rise up through the, this vent hole because it's sucking it up through here i mean this doesn't close it off enough to where it's still going to seep up through and out this and the condensation will you'll see it dripping on the on the lid it'll drip down on the sugar and as it does it'll harden this like a cake like a like well about like this little piece is here and it by within a couple of weeks that'll be rock hard in there so uh to me um, lot, some people make sugar cakes and that's fine that's uh if that's how you choose to do it i never do because I, I think it's kind of a this this to us is easier there goes a the yellow jacket and talking about those real quick since there's one here trying to pop in we've been really good with those this year we use those traps in the spring that's what i talked about in the last video i won't go in detail about that but killed him so uh well i thought i killed him anyway so you just put your lid on like that and simply like that and that's it
and that's all you do. That's so easy to feed these. Now, let's say, for example, that you don't, you don't have that feeder. So what you'll do is, let me move something around here, my sugar. You'll take your feeder off, and what I do, I'll take, you can use a newspaper or paper towel, either one is fine. And the wind's kind of blowing, so kind of be a little bit patient with me here. Usually what I like to do is it aggravates the bees just a little bit. And then I'm doing this one-handed. Okay, let's see here if I can. Let me put it on pause and then I'll be right back. You can might could hear them getting angry there for a minute. They didn't appreciate that too much. A couple of them come out there and pop me in the arms. But anyway, I had to do the, I had to put it on pause because the, the wind was blowing so hard. But what I did, I put my paper towel down. And what what I try to do when I do this, I don't I don't cover up the edges, the edges around here. I try to make the because I did that one year on a couple of hives and it killed them. It just completely closed off the airflow, the ventilation. So so what you do, leave it open around the edges, around the front, and the back, just like that, and just put as much sugar as you possibly can, and spread it out as much as you can. A little bit falls down in the frames, it won't hurt a bit, not a bit. So that's probably about two cups of sugar right there. And that condensation will rise and it'll turn that rock hard and they'll start eating right through that paper towel. And that works very, very, very well. And then when, when you first put it on, uh, if you don't have a lot of headroom down there, it'll, it'll go on a, just a little bit uh, tight, but it'll, it'll settle down. You can even, you know, work your your feeder back and forth a little bit. And so that will get your bees. That's just an added insurance. You know, a lot of people worry about their bees running out of food. Well, do this step. And if, it, if they do run out, they got a whole, they can no matter where they look on, on, that, on those frames, from left to right, up or down the hive, there's sugar right there. I anywhere they go up, they're gonna find sugar. And you can always keep an eye on that when you get a nice warm day, if, if you're uh, in a climate where you can. But if you put down that much, so if you have a tin frame, you can do the same thing, just go with wider on your paper towels or newspaper. Newspaper works good too, whichever you wanna use. I prefer uh, paper towels because it's so much easier to go down through here with a roll of paper towels and spread them out. It just works so much better for me. So that will, you can see those bees and see they're still, it's still ventilating. See, they, they can still work just right under that vent and that'll settle down and they'll still have their ventilation there. Uh, dry pollen, I can't talk about this enough. I've heard a lot of people say don't feed pollen, but we've found out, and from other commercial growers, for a fact, that a lot of times when their bees are dead in the springtime and they can't figure out why, and they look and they see that there's a lot of, a lot of honey and the bees are even on the honey and they're dead. They treat it for mites. They know it wasn't mites for 100% sure because they did the treatments, the test, the, the alcohol treatments or alcohol test, made sure there was no mites, but the bees died on the frames of honey. Well, what we're finding out a lot of times is they're starving from pollen. Uh, it's not, in my opinion, and it's what I believe, it's not just for baby bees. You know, they require so much protein as well. So, make sure you, you keep your, your pollen fed to your bees. Uh, a lot of people that, that's bought it from us uh, said said they're, they're just not taking it now. And well, what's happening is uh, there's a flow on and you don't, you don't have a lot of bees. 
so they don't need it but I can assure you come about uh, December January February you will notice a, a lot of bees at your feeder if you put a pollen feeder out so so put your pollen feeder out make you one buy you one whatever you got to do we have tons of this at barnyard bees barnyardbees.com we've sold tons of this ultra bee it's the best pollen that you can get on the market there's none made better i can assure you none so that'll cover your pollen uh, now what we do we will feed this dry sugar and what what we do i have red maples so i'm 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 lucky that i have red maples up in my yard and i'll keep an eye on those but i also watch the bees as well come about second week of february it depends it varies you know from year to year uh, second third week of february you'll see the bees starting to come in with pollen lots of pollen about that time you'll notice they'll stop eating from your pollen feeder that's right there is a sign it's time to feed sugar or water again we use this routine every single year start off with two to one because it's still cold just like ending in the fall when it's cold uh, the same thing it's still cold offer two to one because uh, you're really not primarily feeding them to generate a lot of wax yet in order to do splits and such or, or uh, uh, grow your grow your hives out bigger so start off with two to one and from there you know as spring comes on you'll know as temperatures as, as your bees multiply you'll see them drawn out more wax you know uh, and here in north georgia we'll feed the two to one till about we only do that for about a month to bar, probably about mid-march mid late march and then we'll start feeding one to one again and then we put in the essential oils very important those essential oils uh if you got to buy it buy it if you can make it i plan on making a video and that's probably here within the next couple weeks i'll make a video on how you can make your own uh formula formula brood builder uh you know because that's most of this has got tea tree spearmint wintergreen tea tree is a primary ingredient though that's the main ingredient it it works against nozema it's like a bee diarrhea that they get especially in the winter time so coming out of winter you, you know which we feed it to them all the time we do not add lemongrass to our feed it's completely unnecessary they don't need to be attracted to sugar water i've never seen a time where you put sugar water out where the bees didn't find it so to me it's comp completely useless and it causes robin so we do not put lemongrass in our uh in our uh, feed so so keep an eye on that you know watch for pollen to come in if you don't have red maples i got two up here uh if you don't have them just watch for pollen when you see that pollen coming in coming in a lot and about that time like i said they'll stop taking the pollen start with that sugar water so let's say i'm going over my list and make sure i haven't forgot anything if i did i will put it in the description always go to my descriptions and read them please because there's a lot of times i'll finish these videos and after having like this one's uh pushing 24 minutes already and i've i've talked pretty much non-stop the whole time and a lot of times i'll think of something and it's hard to go back and remake and talk that much again in a video so i'll go to my description if i forgot anything i will put it in the description for uh, winter hive preparation uh folks this is very important get this video out to as many new beekeepers advanced beekeepers there's a lot of advanced beekeepers that, that don't know these little things that just not worked in the volume of bees that we work here and the bees are really really flying good it's it's cooling down but they're uh there's a lot of bees out flying right now they're everywhere and the wind's blowing fairly hard there must be another cold front blowing in um we're gonna 
have the the brood builder video up and maybe i maybe put it up next week that's probably what i'll do i'll go in there and i'll i'll, I'll show you how to make it. it's very simple uh you just basically put it in a blender you got to use an old blender it's got to be a glass blender because it, it'll actually eat up the parts and it's good to also uh i recommend that you wear gloves because that wintergreen the essential oils are so strong it will burn your hands a little bit so you can put on gloves uh, to help you out a little bit uh that's all i can think of right now like i said check the description uh also uh go to our store uh i was going to show one but i don't have it uh, i think there's some pictures on on our on our website uh we've been selling a lot a lot of barnyard b uh t-shirts right now we got the the hoodies those things are extremely warm i wear them every single day in the in the cold weather um tank tops hoodies t-shirts long sleeve shirt baseball shirts barnyard b emblems uh go check those out uh and then call our store uh i'm not sure if they have them up in there in there to order yet but not, if not, you can call the store and tell them what color you want and what size you want. We'll, we'll get those shipped out to you. Uh, the beetle barns, don't forget about those. If you need any beetle barns, you need any the hive top feeder, we got them. Barnyard bees, we got the pollen, pollen feeders. Uh, everything and anything pertaining to beekeeping. I honestly don't know if there's anything in our store, store we don't have. We've accumulated so much merchandise there. We've done good this year, and, and next year we're going to do even better. And we're growing the bees out we're gonna have a good winter here um, get your bees early if you want packages we're gonna have a lot of them folks we're gonna have a lot of packages and a lot of nukes but you got to get your order out early if you want them early if you if you wait till March and order them then you're gonna get your your bees a lot later so remember that if you're interested in beekeeping we'll get started get your order in now uh, barnyardbees.com don't forget Click on the little bell. Please pass this video on. Let's help the new beekeeper out. Like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Barnyard Bees.